ันได้ได้อาปงมาได้ขยมินกูกอดใจเอาขยมตาปีหิตากลาดโดยเสน่ห์มันไอปกดปกองครูซาเนื้อขยมบานเตะยังหอยนะก็เนื้อขยมตะกัดได้ปลาปูมวยหิตาได้ยอดเวียติจัวสบายเจ็ดเตียงเวียเวียตือหัดดุยถือสลายทุกโลกใช้ประมาณ11มิลลิลิตรของแร่ธรรมชาติทุกปี And the demand has increased rapidly over the last years due to the economic emergence of countries such as China and India. Natural rubber is used mainly for the production of tires, but also for medical equipment and other goods. But where does all that rubber come from? 93% of the world's natural rubber is produced in Asia. Ratanekiri province in northeastern Cambodia is, due to the recent rubber boom, the theater of huge changes in land use and land ownership. As a result, the local population has now less and less land to make a living, and is moving away from traditional rice cultivation. Làm ra sao nắng cao nắng nắng bỏ đây nào chờ đây nào chờ anh phong hỏi đây đây nào phải dừng anh nào dừng anh từng rịt bàn tiệt bỏ sao dừng nắng dừng đầm dừng đầm là dạp bèo pì năm bảy năm dừng anh từng rịt từ một từng tiệt anh nắng anh nắng The rubber industry has turned to countries rich in land and with low wages such as Cambodia to develop rubber plantations. The Cambodian government passed a law in 2001 that formalized the granting of vast areas of land, shown on this map in yellow. Economic land concessions can be granted up to 10,000 hectares of land for a duration of 99 years. They now represent about one-fifth of Cambodia's arable land. In Ratanakiri province, 66% of the granted land is planted with rubber. Various actors are engaged in this process of colonization on one of the last frontiers of Cambodia. Khmer economic land concessions are dominant, followed by Vietnamese and Chinese companies. The region also attracts in-migrants from all over Cambodia who come to buy land and to find work. The phenomenon of land grabbing is really concentrated on, in fact, a handful of countries, uh, about um, Maybe 15 in the world are the most concerned by this phenomenon, many of them in sub-Saharan Africa with very weak governance in which the government is not accountable to the people, and some of them in, in South Asia, Southeast Asia, the Philippines, Laos, Cambodia um, especially. Um, the phenomenon of land grabbing is often seen as a phenomenon that primarily has to do with foreign investors coming in, private or governmental investors. In fact, however, in many countries, the domestic elites play a major role in this phenomenon. And so this means that land grabbing can be a domestic phenomenon. And in Cambodia, we have the two combined. We have some foreign investors producing, for example, rubber in the country, but we also have many domestic landed elites who are now uh, making it much more difficult for small uh, food producers to make a decent living from, from using the land. These investments are made for cash crops um, um, for exports or for uh, large markets and do not contribute really to local food security. Domestic investors range from smallholders to medium scale with a few hundred hectares. Due to the land rush of the last 10 years, it is now difficult to find land even for those that have the means. <laughs> บุญเฮาไปสับหัตตาบ้านดำบ้านตั้งอ้อนนั้นเวียบ้านใบเฮาใบเฮาจัดสับกลองเมาได้จำนวนปีเฮาให้หัดแต่บ้องกวาดติ
ដល់ពេលមកខ្ញុំនៅឆ្នាំ <cười> បាក់ក្រុមហ៊ុនហ្នឹងយើងបាក់ដោះស្រាយគ្នាធ្វើបាបាឡើយបើចង់បរិជាក៏បាក់ដែរខាងខ្ញុំហ្នឹងមានได้ปูខ្ញុំគឺប្រុងលក់វិញតោះខ្ញុំអត់លុយនោះ recent interest for agriculture and the wave of investments in farmland has been um, in part responsible for a very significant increase in the price of land this inflation has sometimes led uh, local people to sell off their land because they benefit from a sort of windfall effect. They suddenly realize that land has a value and they give it away um, uh, to make some money uh, because they've never seen such high prices. The problem is when they lose this connection to the land, they lose the ability to produce food for themselves. Malnutrition rates can increase as a result. They lose the possibility to have access to the land for shelter purposes. And it may be a very short-term calculation for these families who suddenly have some cash, but then lose their means of production and their, their means of shelter. And what you can see behind me is the territorial expansion of a company, a private company, who holds already 400 hectares. This land used to be until 2007 what is called the communal land, which was a sort of reserve where people had the possibility eventually to clear additional land. Of course, with this investment now, there will be no more opportunity for the local population to increase uh, their cultivated area. The current situation of this family is certainly related to the current boom. But it also relates to a former process which started in the 2000s when there was a major change in the land tenure system. With the abandonment of the former collective land tenure system to a private ownership one. For some, the new system of privately owned land has offered the opportunity to secure land for permanent crops. According to the survey that our team carried out in 2013, 16% of the families in these communes have been able to plant rubber. Only a few better off families have managed to develop larger rubber plantations. Planting rubber requires a considerable investment when compared to other crops.
ปีปนปมปมใบขยำยอพอลปีจันเต้ขยำต่อดำดำน้ำกาวสูวิญขยำดำดำน้ำกาวสูนั้นสนามปีปีปนปมใบบานปีหันกะละจังบานขยำปะเราไปขยำปะนั้นขยำทอเตียเนี่ยเราไปขยำขยำทำไมที่ขยำขยำดำมาหัดเอาขยำขยำนี่ขยำบานดำไปหัดจะไปโจประมูลหัด The rubber boom is pouring cash into the local economy, leading local people to increase their expenses. New houses are built, shops open inside villages, motorcycles have become omnipresent, and there are many plans for future improvements. Bị sọc bìm chéo khẹt bay về, nhiều nhóm miền chấm nón tam nẹt, mao bán bầm bờ khẹt thưa tiệt bán bầm bờ tiệt. สกนี่เวียทเวชเชิญคลาบองโปนจุนเจนคลาเกตรูกับซูคลาเทเกมีนดำกับซูเชิญเกอาเชื่อดังไปเชื่อเท่าโลดอดไหลสมรกได้สาเชื่อเวียออกปุ๋ยเชื่อนี่เวียกลมพลกิติงออกดอกเปย์มาชนะไปชนะติดเต้เวียออกเชื่ออันมีนเชื่อติดเต้เวียเชื่อในเลยกลมพลออกเกี่ยนึงเกี่ยตะชุกชุกใช่รอทั้งไงเจ้าดอยเมียนเชิญนาทิตอ๋อรอไงกลับเชิญตอนนั้นได้กลมพลที่ตอนกี่กี่อ้อยกลับเจ้านะไฮเบอร์เชิญนายยืงนี่หนึ่งสระยืงภูมิยืงนึงอันเมียนที่เมียนจะได้กลมพล As you can see on the hill, large areas of former forest were cut, and nowadays people feel the pressure and the risk of not being able to find the trees they need to build the new houses. พวกเราต้องยืมปีจรอลไฮเทอร์เทียบางอย่างมันเทอที่เวียงเชอร์บางอย่างเทอยูยูนี่เชอร์นี่นั่งรูเชอร์นั่งไล่หนาพวกการนั่งนั่งเวียนเอาเมียนเชอร์ปัญหาเวียนมันตอนกึศดำพวกไอ้ไอ้เขียมดำชนะนำเตอร์นั่งโจลขนมเตียถึงอ๋อเปียกเกมมอนมอนนั่งนะ It may also be the case that the small food producers will benefit from linkages with these large producers, for example, because infrastructures are improved. Uh, their access to markets, therefore, um, um, is, is improved, and they can um, sometimes benefit from some outgrower schemes uh, connecting themselves to the larger industrial plantation. <laughs> โมลาทานพงคมเราจังเขียวกรมพลเกตติงหัวจอยท่าใจยืงมาเตียมาเตียจักเธอเตียทมอเตียไอเตียกับโมกาเมียนสลาเฮียนเมียนตั้งมาตีเปรตเตียไปเจี๊ Regretfully, what we see is that most of the money and new infrastructure has gone away from the small villages to urban areas. The main tangible improvement has been the district road from the province capital to the border with Vietnam. This road is crucial to export fresh latex milk to the processing factories. While there are few real improvements, the rubber boom has brought a lot of new challenges to the local population, such as land tenure issues, competition from in-migrants, and increased inequality. Until 2008, this land was farmed by villagers. In 2008, this land was granted as an economic land concession to a company. This triggered strong protests from the villagers, which were even reported in the newspaper. At the same time the company started to clear the land, villagers also cleared the land in an attempt to prevent the company to spread further. The same has been happening in the neighboring communes. Like day, night, day, a day, young, some job, tour, tang, be on time, young, be on more, tang, be on some like oh, la hot, dark, and on that, young, not, not to one another day. Hm, poor day, young, don't have day, some patin, but for God, man, day, young, I dumb dough, young, dumb dough, young, I mean, set tall, ah, young, by young room, clear, then on some come. By the end of 2011, there were many cases of similar conflict between villagers and economic land concession in many places in Cambodia. Because of the magnitude of this conflict, the Prime Minister issued a directive that stipulated that the land claimed by the villager should be measured 
and recognized as their own property. The directive has smoothened the tension as villagers could retrieve part of the land plots which were inside the concession territory. Democracy is really key for land security to be improved. And democracy means that uh, the people should be able to hold governments accountable for how well the land rights are protected. The guidelines adopted in 2012 by the Committee on World Food Security just like the human rights principles that I propose to the Human Rights Council, are instruments that civil society, opposition political parties, the media, should rely on in order to press demands to governments that they improve security of tenure. And I think it's especially important today um, because of this wave of investments in farmland, because of the huge corruption in how land deals are being concluded, because of the the, the, the commercial pressures on land, not only because of investments in farmland, but also because of sprawling cities and large industrial projects and infrastructures that put pressure on land and, and lead to the price of land to increase. So now is the time for people to mobilize to demand change. <laughs> In the two communes studied in this research, we found that the process went fairly well in one, while in the other, there were more conflicts. There are about 100 families living in this village, and they settled here in the early 90s at the request of the government, who expected the population to benefit infrastructure such as the health center, access to school and access to the roads, which is a good thing in principle for the population. But there's a trade-off. Actually, those population used to live a few kilometers from here, where they had been living for decades, where they knew the land, and where they had been living following their traditional land tenure system. People we interviewed in this village explained that in 2008, when the economic land concession took the land they were cultivating, they didn't dare to claim for the land because they felt it was not really their land. In 2012, after the land was measured by the student, the company compensated the populations with allocating new land plots. But they allocated new plots on a different location and this created confusion among the villagers. The voluntary guidelines on the responsible governance of tenure of land, fisheries and forests adopted by the CFS in May 2012, of course, in principle are not a binding legal instrument. They are voluntary guidelines. Nevertheless, they express existing international obligations of states under human rights law in many respects. In addition, these guidelines have been negotiated by an intergovernmental body, that is the CFS, so governments cannot simply ignore them when governments redefine the regulatory framework uh, around land issues at home. What's really interesting in these guidelines is that they emphasize the rights of communities and not just the rights of individuals, that they focus on the importance of protecting customary forms of tenure, which in many cases have a very strong legitimacy in the eyes of the local populations. 
The voluntary guidelines for sure include measures that could better protect populations from dispossession. However, the question remains who is going to implement these guidelines on the ground. In Ratanakiri, local governments, civil society organizations and populations just do not know the guidelines. This could be solved easily as the guidelines could be disseminated to the main stakeholders. A more important obstacle is that companies do not have any incentive nor pressure to implement the principles for responsible investments. One of the comparative advantages defined in Ratanakiri is that they are not accountable for the many violations of economic, social and cultural rights they may perpetrate. How then can we expect that they will voluntarily implement the guidelines? Another challenge to the local population is the increase of in-migrants that have been arriving in the region since the early 90s, when the area was securitized. In the two communes we surveyed in 2013, in-migrants now represent about one-third of the population. ຂຶ້ນຈາໄປໄວຍັງໄດ້ຕິດປະຊາຊົນຈານ <coughs> More recently, and different from six, seven years ago, the growing number of Khmer migrants coming into this commune is increasing competition with local workers in search for land. បច្ចុប្បន្នហ្នឹងកម្មករយើងមានដល់ in migrants are competing with the native population. They are better skilled and usually have relatives in the region that can give them a helping hand. Most managers of companies are in migrants, so other in migrants have more chances of getting hired. ແລະខ្ញុំធ្លាប់ដើមមកនៅនឹងទៅទៅដើមទៅជាមួយខ្លៅពួកម៉ាបងប្អូននឹងមកនេះទៅមានកន្លែងរោស៊ីមកធ្វើខ្ញុំគេខ្ញុំ <coughs> រស់នៅក្នុងភូមិកាន់តែច្រើនកាន់តែច្រើនហើយជនជាតិពួកខ្ញុំមានចំណេះទៀបជាងពួកគាត់គេគេកំណាន់ខ្ពស់ទី 1
ให้บางวันวยอัดเมนเลยขนาดได้ห้ปีมให้กดนักการเมนเลยได้บัตรเราเนี่ยบัตรยังเมนเลยเป็นกระบอกยังไอ้พลาสติกนอบ้านบัตรอยู่อัดบานเลยเรายังเตาตะเตนังครุ่นยังอยู่มาไอ้พลาสติกนอบ้านเลย The key limitation for migration is the lack of connections outside of the commune, while locally a main limitation is the lack of technical skills crucial for rubber plantation success. As rubber is new in these communes, local people need the expertise of immigrants, but not everyone can afford it. เอ่อเข้มจังเตรียมเลขคณะเอาเข้มเอ่อรอกรรมการเพื่อเอาอาชีพเอาเข้มเนี่ยมันแม่นเข้มยอดแต่หน้าเอาเข้มเกลี้
Globally, there is a shift in this regard, but locally, in Ratanakiri, the bulk of the population has come to realize that the rubber boom is not within their reach and that their future livelihood will consist more and more of trying to sell the labor force. Inequality is increasing between the local population and better skilled in migrants, and also between a tiny local elite and the rest of the villagers. Overall, the local population has lost access to the resource they had been living from, and the rubber boom has not provided them with any alternative livelihood. What I've seen over the past six years as I end my mandate as Special Rapporteur on Right to Food is a very significant shift in the understanding of hunger and malnutrition. You see in the past, hunger and malnutrition were seen as a lack of sufficient food being produced, and the solution was obvious. You should reward the most efficient producers, you should encourage um, the most competitive producers to achieve better by stimulating them by trade, and the food deficit regions should simply buy food from the food surplus regions or benefit from, um, uh, from food aid. This has changed, and today the paradigm is very different. The um, governments and all the international community now insist on um, smallholders being better supported because that is how rural poverty can really be reduced, that is how rural development can be improved, and that is how we are going to reduce hunger and malnutrition sustainably. ពេលដែលខ្ញុំជួបមិត្តភាតតែងតែជាចេកគ្នាពីពីការព្រួយបារម្ភព្រោះមិនដឹងថាទៅថ្ងៃអនាគតអត់មានដៃណាមួយដ